coffee mug. Jesus Christ. coffee mug that works there we go oh no it spilled all over the place thank you thank you wouldn't be Tuesday morning without a massive coffee spill all over my workbench that's right that's right This lady at work, she says to me, it's the season, guys. You know, October. It's a big deal. Listen, I know everybody's rolling their eyes. I love October. I've said it a million times. Yeah, I know. Everybody's falling asleep. But I go to work the other day, and one of the fucking dumb broads behind the desk there I say, uh, oh, how, what's going on? What'd you do this weekend? I went to the apple picking festival. Huh? I'm like, oh, yeah? Oh, that's great. Where'd you go? Because, you know, here on Long Island, you go out east. You know, that that's what everybody loves to do. They go out east. They sit in traffic so they can pick rotten apples off a tree because all the good apples have been taken. So... You, you pick uh, apples, I don't know, with worms. Like, you ever, you ever read a children's book? It's like when you hold an apple and it's like a worm coming out of it. You're like, oh, wow. This is great. You put it in your bag and then they overcharge you for rotten apples. And everybody's happy. Hey, hey, we're, we're Long Island idiots. Everybody now. Yeah, that's, that's here. But that's what everybody does. Or you, you can go to the pumpkin patch and you can pick some, I don't know, sad sack pumpkins. This type of thing. And like slip and fall. You, let me tell you something right now. You, you have a slip on a banana peel? I know. Nobody has. That's only stuff that happens in the cartoons. Go to a pumpkin patch. You, you'll be slipping and sliding. You, you never slipped on a pumpkin, a rotten pumpkin? You have no idea. This is like, I don't know. Synthetic oil. Why, why don't you just spray the field with synthetic oil while you're at it? Yeah. 5W30. Ah, go to hell and back. Let me tell you something. You grab the, 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 these are, I got news for you. When you go to the pumpkin patch, you're getting, I don't know, these are autistic pumpkins. I mean, that's the ones you're getting. All the good ones went to Costco, BJ's, Sam's Club. You, you ever go to Costco? You ever see the pumpkins there? It's like, oh my God, what, what, is this like Cinderella's fucking, uh, stagecoach? It's the most, they're the most beautiful pumpkins you've ever seen in your life. I love it. My wife buys these fucking pumpkins. We put them in front of the house with like mums, like this whole thing. Hay bales, mums. Yeah, we're on the farm now. You didn't know? In the middle of Copeg. When they just stole a woman's car out of a driveway down the block, mind you. Oh, yeah. Isn't that great? Great place to live and raise children. So this lady at work. I said, well, where'd you go uh, apple picking? And she goes, oh, they, they had it. They had it right in Amityville. Huh? And I'm like, Amityville? And listen, I know you guys aren't from Long Island, but I got to tell you right now. You ever see that? How, how do I explain Amityville to you? Okay, basically, you have, you, you're driving with your family. You drive through Amityville. When you come out on the other side, your hubcaps are gone, your radio's missing, and your wife is pregnant. That's about all. Yeah. 
I'm, there is not an apple. I don't think there's an apple to be found in Amityville. <laughs> Maybe a bad apple. How about that? Plenty of those. Yeah, I, I wish I could sit here and lie to you. Okay? I'd love for you to come to me. Well, you know what you're saying is racist? And, uh, you know, you're dis this is a disparaging comments? I say, okay, here you go. I'm going to drive you to Amityville and I want you to walk through. That's right. No, you, there's no problem. Go ahead, walk through. That's right. You come out of there, I don't know, looking like uh, Bonnie and Clyde after the shooting. Guys, I don't know what to tell you. I looked at it, I was like, how, what? Amityville. I said, like, you I, I think I, I think I laughed. Like that was a, oh, it's a good joke. And now, you know, where'd you go <laughs> apple picking? You know? Huh? Oh, you really did go to Amityville? All right, listen, I gotta go. Yeah, I gotta go drive the fucking floor scrubber now. See you later. I, I'm praying there's a toilet clogged with shit somewhere so I can stop talking to you. That's right. I'll go unplug the shit covered toilet. Oh my God. We got these automatic flushometers at work. You ever see these? This is the worst invention by humankind. I mean, they're the most unreliable uh, machines ever devised. <clears throat> yeah, oh, automatic toilet sensors. They break down all the time. And you know when they break down? When there's like a five foot shit going across the bottom of the toilet bowl. The kind, I, 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 you go in there and it's like the Brooklyn Bridge over the hole in the bottom. Yeah, uh, and we get over the radio. Uh, Jesse, the uh, toilets need attention. It's like, hey, listen, can you shine a fucking prison spotlight on me while you're at it? Doosh! The fucking warehouse is, is, is packed. I, I'm wearing a name badge that says Jesse. And is and I hear over the radio, uh, Jesse, we need Jesse down here. The uh, the toilets need attention. Translation, toilets need attention is uh, a huge shit stuck in the toilet. Yeah, so I get this. Uh, Jesse to the bathroom, to the ladies room even better. That's when I get real shivers down my spine. And then I get this, boosh. It's like, hey, everybody, it's me. Let me start dancing for you. I mean, I'm the guy that cleans the shit out of the dirty toilet. I mean, yeah. Oh, no, it, it, everybody. I want everybody in the store to know. You heard the name Jesse over the radio? That's me, Jesse. <laughs> Gonna go clean the shit toilet now. And then you go in there, and number one, the sense is broken. So naturally, so now me and the log of shit, we gotta form a bond together. That's right, because I gotta bend over. So, you know, I got a long nose too. So my nose is practically in the water. Now I gotta bend over, and now I'm inches away from the most heinous log you've ever seen in your life. I mean, I see, I see, like, the, I, so this guy needs to go to the doctor. That's the bottom line. So let me get down next to this and take the sensor off. Now keep in mind, you can't flush the toilet because the sensor won't allow the toilet to flush. So yes. Yes, and then it's like the the particles of shit. They come out. They 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 leap off the shit. You didn't even. What are you smelling? What are you smelling? When you smell a shit, it's pieces of the shit coming off, and atomizing, and they're going up to your nose, and you're getting pieces of shit up your nose. Don't tell me otherwise. Just it's just small pieces of shit. And the, the goddamn uh, shit is coming out of the water. 
Okay, so we don't have that, you know, sewage odor barrier of water. And like a porpoise. I got a brown dolphin taking a leap at me. So we, I got to sit there and uh, like gag, like while I'm taking off the, the, the toilet sensor. That's right. And then there's a whole, you know, then I'm really proud when I get the sensor off and like the guy's like taking a piss next to me at the urinal. I'm like, I know these sensors up and down. That's right. Sometimes the, the battery cover gets a crack. They're made like shit. The battery cover gets a crack, then you get you got to order a new battery cover because the, the batteries won't connect. So that's one one thing that goes wrong. And then uh, what's the other thing? The magnet, the magnet falls out of the switch in the top, lands on the sensor, it won't allow it to, to, to flush. Oh yeah, this, these types of things. You have no idea. It's not calibrated right. You, you got to adjust the things in the back. You know what? You want to talk about fucking uh, toilet sensors? Please, I could I could be here all day. I ca I came up with a, a way for a guy to make a lot of money, and it's a total police scam. I mean, you can go to jail for this. All I notice where I go, I go to IHOP, I go to certain restaurants. They all have the same toilet sensors, right? So what you do is you go into a I go into an IHOP or something like that. And you take a bad sensor, because you, you've been doing this ploy now for a long time. You take a bad sensor, and you unscrew their toilet, and you put the bad sensor in. No cameras in the bathroom, so, I mean, if you're going to commit crime these days, you got to do it in the bathroom, because it's the only place without cameras. You'd, be, you, you'd have to be world's dumbest criminal uh, nowadays. To try like robbing and stealing and stuff like that. There's cameras everywhere. Everywhere. It's not like back in the day where you could like rob and steal and like, hey, you know, that that's all uh, that's like my occupation. You can't do that anymore. Anyhow, you pop the bad sensor in. Then you go and you tell the manager, say, listen, I'm trying to take a shite in there. This toilet's not flushing or whatnot. And he's like, oh really? Say, listen, I'm a I'm a plumber by trade. I said, I can get these parts for you. I can get them cheap. I said, you want me to fix it for you? I said, I'll charge you, charge you $100. Because you have to understand something. These guys know, the managers know. The sensor is like $200. So I'll fix it. I'll do the labor and everything. Give me 100 bucks. I'll fix it. The guy's like, oh, yeah, sweet deal. So you go to McDonald's next door, and you take their good sensor, and then you come back to Wendy's, I mean, IHOP, you put their good sensor in, and then you go, there you go, buddy. Toilet's all fixed. And then you go to IHOP, and you go up to the manager, and you say, you know, I was taking a shit in your toilet. The goddamn thing doesn't work. Uh, give me a hundred bucks, I'll fix it for you. I'm a plumber. Oh, really? A hundred dollars? That's cheap, sure. And then you go, and you take the good sensor from somewhere else. And then you continue that. And you just make, I don't know, like a couple grand a day? <laughs> Until the guy in IHOP is like, you fixed our toilet nine times this week. What's going on? <laughs> Anyhow. Hey, listen. You know, listen. Uh, what is that? Uh, organized crime by Bithead 1000. I mean, this is this should be Patreon stuff. You know? God almighty. Ah, you can't do that shit, though, right, guys? You can't. You can't. That's karma. That'll come back and bite you. Next thing you know, I got a fucking a tumor on my nutsack. Like, oh, great. You know, I'm driving a Mercedes now with all my urinal money. And I got a, you know, I got a big tumor on my nuts. Hey, I'll take a tumor on my nuts. As long as they get bigger. Oh, my God. Listen, I used to work with a guy. He had a hernia. At least that was the lore. I don't know. But he had a nutsack. I swear to Christ, it was down to his... It looked like... If if it was a hernia... Because people don't give a shit. You understand? They get a cyst. It's got to be like the size of a watermelon before they have it removed. You see it on the news all the time. I said, so fuck it. A, a herniated bur burl sack? Give it to me. 
He had a sack down to his knees. You could see it right through his jeans. I'm like, holy crimson Christ. This is like, the ladies must go crazy. <laughs> and it's like, nobody will say anything to him because it's, it's like the elephant in the room when you have a conversation with him. I feel like saying, hey, hey, Joe, uh, you know, that's a fucking huge nutsack. I don't know if anybody ever told you that. And I mean, nice, bro. I don't know if you can do that. I don't know. People don't tell the truth. Do you know that? Did you, have you figured that out yet? You know, you understand that nobody tells the fucking truth. Everybody's a goddamn liar. I'm telling you. Everybody's a goddamn liar. Lying is part of, uh, I don't know, human existence. There's just some people that lie less. Don't ever let anybody tell you, like, oh, I'm honest. I'm honest. If you're that honest, you're in prison. That's the bottom line. And out there, there's, there's somebody that doesn't have any, like, I don't know, like a social compass. And they were dead honest. They landed themselves in jail. Yeah. Because if you're dead honest, when you walk by a girl, you'd be like, you know what? <laughs> I want to eat your asshole. I see the way you're walking and your pussy's going back and forth. And I'd like to stick my tongue right up your ass. Next thing, you slaps black and blue's bloody nose. The cops got you down. There's handcuffs involved. This is a honesty. So, you know, knock it off. Stop, stop with me and your honesty. At least tell me you're a liar. Then I got a little respect for you. <sighs> what are we talking about here? Guys, the cupboard's a fucking bear. I mean... You know, you got other channels on here that you can watch. They're great. I watch them all the time. I watch them all the time. Yeah, yeah. I watch them all the time. Yeah, yeah. A Violent Femmes. I, 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 I told. I said I was going to listen to them. I, I haven't yet. It's still on the. Uh, it's in the old. You know. You know calendar book up there yeah so we had Oktoberfest what do you want me to tell you I get home from work it's Sunday October 3rd Lindenhurst Oktoberfest I'm all about it baby you know in previous years they have classic cars there I could go look at the classic cars I know I'll take my son and he'll just like start touching everything and I got news for you. I thought about this the other day. I'm like, I want to take my son to car shows and whatnot. But I could see my son, like, opening the doors. Like, I don't know, throwing sand into the intake manifold. Like, like right into some guy's supercharger. Just be like, whoosh. And this uh, touching the paint. I get the heebie-jeebies. When I get around somebody's automobile, I, I don't even, I don't touch it. I have a lot of respect for other people's property. It could be uh, the uh, fucking... The guy at work's fucking Cutlass. He's got a V6 Cutlass. 84 Cutlass. V6. I said, what are you doing? He almost got into a fight with me the other day because I told him to take it to the scrapyard. So, yeah. He, he insists it's a, it's a classic. He got, ri he, got, he got rims for it. That's great. That's great. And he put, like, I think he put dual exhaust on it. I'm like, you're the loser of Loserville. You're the mayor of Loserville, Loser Town. Yeah. And I, every time I see him, I say, uh, you know, take it down to Gershaw. You know, put it in the crusher, this type of thing. And he gets so mad, he wants to fight me. But I just, you know. To be honest with you, he's old and shot. And if he ever, if he ever tried to fight me, I'd run away. That's, that's my deal. Like, uh... When a fight when a fight starts to happen, I just run away. I oh, fuck you. Catch me. If you want to fight, you got to catch me. I have no problem running away. No, 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 no. It's like a, it's like a, you know an RPG. Live to fight another day, or not fight. Live to run another day. I'm not here to fight. All right, I'm not gonna fight you because of your uh, V6. Because you have a piece of shit V6 Cutlass. I mean, God Almighty. It's the two headlight cutlass, too. Bro. 
I mean, you want to talk to me about an 87 Cutlass? That was a good looking car. The one piece headlight? Now you're talking. Two headlights on a Cutlass? You're fucking out of here. And a V6? Oh God, I can't wait to see him next time. He's the guy that almost fought me because I told him that his, his headlights weren't adjusted properly. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh, I gotta go easy. I hurt my back at work yesterday. Oh God. <sighs> yeah. He fought, he wanted to fight, yeah, because I told him. Uh, that's a long story. Anyhow, what are we talking about here? Oh, Oktoberfest. Uh, uh, yeah, so I get, I get out at 12.15. 12, I'm home by 12.15. Uh, oh, Jesus, crime love. And naturally, I tell my wife the day before, I say, we're going to Oktoberfest. I don't, I don't want to go to October. I, I said, this isn't an option. Do you understand? I'm taking my family to Oktoberfest. If my son has any memories at all, other than his father constantly screaming at the top of his lungs, I want him to have wonderful memories of going to Oktoberfest, German festival, this type of thing. You understand? You just want to go there so you could drink. And I'm like, yeah, and? <laughs> Why else do you go to Oktoberfest? Oh, what a ding dong, for cripe's sake. Anyhow, I don't know. She thought that was going to be like the knockout blow. You know, like she was going to get me with that one. I don't know. It's a failure. Uh, you know, epic fail. Is that what the young kids say now? Epic fail. Like my son, he says literally now for everything. Dada, I literally had a bowl of cereal. I'm like, what? No, drop the literally. That's That doesn't apply here. Dada, I'm gonna literally watch TV now. I'm like, no, it's not. Stop with the literal. He's hearing this shit on TV. Everything is literally. I literally hear about it every day. I think that one applies. I mean, it's 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 all and then it's internet dancing. What are you doing? Are you a grown man? Are you, you, well, you're six. Are you? Are you? A, what? What are you? Oh my god! So I tell my my wife the, the day before, be ready when I get home. Be ready. I'll jump in the shower. My shower takes, I don't know, T minus three minutes. Let's face it. You just go around the holes. When when a man takes a shower, all, all he really has to do is go around the holes. So I take like a, like a whole soap and shower, this type of thing. I jump out of there. You know, it's Kalanji. I put in the hair gel. This It's a, a, a please don't ask. There's a whole thing going on. I, you would think like, I, I, I don't know. I was uh, Chuck Woolery, like going out onto stage. I, the only thing I don't do is put fucking powder on my face. I might as well powder my fucking face while I'm at it. You know, the Q-tips go in. Do, 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 do. <laughs> this type of thing. I'm ready for German uh, Oktoberfest. It takes us about, I don't know. I come home, she's in her pajamas. My son's in his pajamas, Wii U in hand. It's either the Wii U, the Switch, or what, whatever. Whatever. And uh, she's in her pajamas, mop on the floor, floor soaking wet. I'm like, what are you doing? Somebody's gotta clean this house. And I'm like, whoa, we're supposed to be going to Oktoberfest. There's a slick of water on the floor. I can't even walk in the house. Like, where am I supposed to go? Take your shoes off and go into the boys' room. I'm like, I, I, I go in there. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. I'm waiting for the floors to dry now. Do you understand? I can hear the music, like the festive music. I can see the classic cars. And I'm in a house waiting for the floor to dry. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. 
Then she's got to get ready. It's the shower. It's the, the makeup. The war paint has to go on. Do you understand? And it's this bronzer. There's rouge. I don't know. Toner from the fucking printer. Something's going on. There's, there's brushes. I, you've never seen brushes like this. Makeup brushes. Have you ever seen this? It's like it's like the the things the Chinese guys paint with. I'm like, what do you lay? You, you, how thick do you got to lay it on? The lipstick comes out. Oh, you don't even know. So we got we we get we finally get outside. I'm like, we're taking your car. Why do we always take my car? Because I'm gonna be fucking inebriated by the end of this goddamn thing. Come on, she doesn't even drink, and she's wondering why I'm not driving. I'm like, this isn't like uh, I don't know advanced calculus. Yeah, do the math. Do the math. Anyway, we get to Oktoberfest, and I got news for you right now. This year, they opened it up. It used to be like if you wanted to have a drink, they'd shuffle you into like a little beer garden. It was like this little fenced off area. It's like alcoholics here. They should have put up big signs. All the alcoholics right here. And everybody's like mauling around, bumping into each other in the beer garden. Now you could drink wherever you want. They had the whole road closed. All the restaurants in town, they had the uh, their beer things out. So they had like kind of like nice beers. I mean, usually you go there, it's like, I don't know, Bud Light and what, maybe like a half brow. And it's run by like, oh, it's run by the, the Royal Order of the Moose. Yes, that's what the, uh, the Loyal Order of the Moose. The Moose, the Moose Lodge. Okay? Do I got to tell you about the guys in the Moose Lodge? <sighs> I thought of two guys from high school that I grew up with. Michael Corelli and, uh, I don't know, another kid. He was like half retarded. These are guys from the Moose Lodge. I mean, I, th there was three guys there that had toupees on, just to let you know. I'm like, you don't even see anybody wearing toupees this day and age. But they're all at the Moose Lodge. So these guys, they have, I'm like, what's going on here? They don't have that, that big furry hat with the horns coming out of it, like like Fred Flintstone. They, they, they're one step uh, down from uh, the the Poobahs, the Grand Pooba. Re most ridiculous organization you've ever seen. This is like, I don't know. These guys can get together and Michael Corelli in high school would listen to Meatloaf. Okay? And I got news for you. If you're in high school, if you were in high school when I was a kid, uh, Meatloaf is probably the most uncool band of all time. Yeah. I'm, I'm here to tell you. I'm here. I never understood it. I never got it. Sorry. And I think it was cemented from the time Michael Corelli came in, would listen to Meatloaf, and he'd bring in his Meatloaf tapes and, like, carry them around. I wanted to, uh, I don't know, corner kick from soccer. I wanted to corner kick the fucking, uh, the Meatloaf tapes right off the fucking desk every day. I was like, I, I would think about kicking the tapes as hard as I can into the, the the windows and hopefully like shatter the windows and the, the, the tapes fall and they hit somebody in the head with shards of glass I don't know guys fucking meatloaf tapes and then he would then he would have conversations with with Mr. Nelson the history teacher the the other uh the the other least coolest thing around yeah the guy used to wear uh fucking polyester pants and he had a, he had his key keys on a thi uh, on a on a, like a fob. I don't even know what you call it, the thing that re the retractable cable. And he used to open up the closet door like, and then let go of the key, and it would be like zip. And he thought it was like the the coolest thing of all time. Yeah, loser, complete loser. And him and Michael Corelli before class. They would uh, talk meatloaf, and you're like, oh my god. Like, you just, everybody's looking at Michael Corelli like, this guy, we, we gotta get him thrown into a locker. I don't know, beat him till he's bleeding from his ears. This type of thing. This is how kids get beat up. Stick his head in the turlet, flush it a few times. 
That's the guy. Right there. We found him. Get on the radio. Yeah. <clears throat> we found him. By the way, I got we discovered this on the Patreon show. All the more reason why you should sign up. These cigarettes blow smoke, which makes them the greatest item a human being can own. Oh my God, if I had that when I was a kid, I'd be in, uh, in school like this. The teacher would be like, hey, 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 no smoking in class. I'd be like this. <sighs> Go fuck your mother. And this goddamn shithead class you're running over here. It sucks. It sucks. Anyhow. <sighs> yeah, we got him. He's over here. Uh... Yeah, he, he's discussing meatloaf with the uh, with the history teacher. And you hear on the other end, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's our guy. That's him. All right. Uh, we'll drag him to the bathroom after class. I mean, in the locker room, what are you going to do? And listen, uh, what is like, <laughs> what did you say, meatloaf tapes? Yeah, he's got meatloaf tapes. All right. Uh, we'll get, we'll break a broomstick in half and, uh, yeah, we'll get him in the uh, boys' locker room. Uh, there's going to be a... Uh, uh, it's going in dry. That's all I got to say. And he deserves every plunging. I'm telling you right now, guys. We lost... I don't know. We lost... We lost command of the Enterprise here. What were we talking about? Oh, the Royal Order of the Moose. They were in charge of the fucking beer. So it's like, you gotta buy a ticket, then you gotta stand online. I'm like, fuck you. Fuck. Fuck all of you assholes. And I'll be over here, buying from the restaurants in the street. I don't know why I, I have something against the Royal Order of the Moose. I mean, what are they gonna... They're, they're gonna show up and... I'm gonna get her like a brick through my bay window now. With the Moose Lodge fucking logo on it. Anyhow, what am I going to tell you? I was drinking fucking, I don't know what kind of beers. I was just dump dumping them down. Two of my friends showed up, old buddies. Like, you have no idea. One guy, he was there from Florida. Like, old friends showed up, this type of thing. You know what I love it? They're all in shape now. I, it, all my friends are in shape, and now I'm like a slob. I always used to be in shape. And now my buddy's like going to CrossFit. This is unheard of. Like, the kid never touched a gym in his life. Now he's going to CrossFit, and he's like, he's looking good. He's looking buff. I'm like, hey, oh, you look great. And I'm looking down, and I, and like, I see the horizon of my stomach and the floor. Like, I don't even see my feet. And I wear a size 14. I'm like, oh, that's great. Great, great to hear your uh, your whole uh, you know health and fitness thing is working out for you. Uh, you gonna have a beer? Are you sitting there with no beer? So you are gonna have a beer? And it always almost like begrudgingly, begrudgingly he'll have a beer. I'm like Jesus Christ, I don't know how to twist your fucking arm. So we go and we get a beer. Then my other friend shows up, th this guy, and he's like uh, he's like in shape now. I mean, this is another guy that never went to the gym. Now he's in shape, and. I'm like, what are you doing? Standing around, you don't have a beer? I'm like forcing beers on everybody. I'm that guy. And he's like, oh no, he's like, I don't really drink anymore. He's like, uh, I get headaches. I was like, how what? Well, when you get a headache, you drink more. Like, I, at this point I have two beer, I have a beer in each hand. Because my wife takes one sip of the beer and then she hands it to me. I'm like, oh, okay, I've got two beers now. This is a good look, yeah. My father's like, and my, my, my son's like nagging me. Like pulling on my shorts to the point where I start yelling at him in, in front of public. I'm like yelling at my son and I got two be a beer in each hand. It's a great look. You don't know? Yeah. So. It's like great great to see everybody and, and you know. Do you know what I, I look at it and they're both successful? Like one's retired. The other one's like, I don't know. He's like knocking it out of the park financially. And I'm like, boy. These guys are going somewhere in life. And then some of them have already been places. And I'm like, yeah. And, uh, well, uh, 
Gotta go, guys. I gotta wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning to go to work. Yes, that's right. See you later. I, got, I gotta cut out of here early. That's right. Maybe, that, maybe that's why I'm three-fisting beers over here. <sighs> Anyhow, good to see everybody. Great to see my buddy in Florida so he could tell me how his taxes are like $3 a year. That's right. He escaped Long Island where we pay uh, $12,000 a year in taxes to go down to Florida and pay $3 a year. That's great. That bubble, we can't move. No, we can't move. Look, guys, Callahan here. Morning for duty. And that's it. Just like that, we're scanning for crimes. Anyhow, I got a pretzel over there. I got to tell you something. It was th this pretzel was like uh, it was like eating a my pillow. I got to tell you that right now. The pretzel. I wish I could lie to you. The pretzel was this big, and thick like this. And they got them on a grill. Do you understand? I like the fucking line for this pretzels. You've never saw a more egregious line in your life. Think about I, I don't know. Waiting waiting online for King. Stop talking. Out of here. Like waiting online for King Kong at Universal Studios. This type of thing. I waited on that fucking line. See, the thing is, I'm sitting there in the middle of the road talking with my friends. We're sitting there for like, I don't know, a half hour. Talking, talking, talking. And then I look over, I'm like, I want one of those pretzels. And we see the line. I said, we could have been on that line talking. We would have a pretzel right now. But anyway. And then Rita falls in catastrophic fashion. Something broke. You okay, girl? That was a yes in Cap Gun. It can't... So anyway, I, we, we get up to the pretzel stand there, and this is where my stepdaughter starts showing me pictures of like a house or something like that. And I'm like, we're next. And she's like, but look at it, look at, uh, uh, we're, we're, you see this line? We are next. It's pretzel time. Okay, put away the phone. It's pretzel time. Like, no awareness. Anyhow. The guy hands me the pretzel. You got you got to understand something. This, this is like the pretzel they put on the side of your car and your car flips over. Uh. This was, this was uh, the kettlebell of pretzels. She hands me the pretzel. I'm like, oh, my God. I rip a piece off. I eat it. And, guys... What is it about a warm pretzel? That uh, there's like, if somebody was shot like ten times, laying in the in the middle of the street, bleeding out, right? And you went up to him and you're like, "Hey, buddy, you know, there's no no chance for you. You know, your curtains." And he's like, "Oh," he's like, "Tell my wife, tell my wife how much I." And you pull out a, like a pretzel. Or a fucking glass of water. You're like, hey, buddy, let's let's cut the bullshit. All right. You want a sip of water or you want a bite of this pretzel with salt on it? And you'd be like, because you know how you go into shock and all you want is water, right? Like, give me the pretzel. And then you like you hand it to him really slow, hoping that he dies before he takes a piece of the pretzel so you can eat it. What are we talking about here? So, uh, this motherfucking pretzel, bro, I'm, I don't know what to tell you. I gave a, I gave a piece to my wife. My wife oh, can't like anything on planet Earth. She's like, nah, nah, nah. I'm like, what? what you, she, are you like alien creature? I give a piece to my son 
and he hands it back to me. I'm like, hey, I'll fuck everybody. I'm embarrassed to tell you, I ate the entire pretzel. This was eating, this was like, like eating two loaves of Wonder Bread. Delicious, with beer, the salt, this type of thing. Oh my God, tremendous. And then we walk over, they got a pig. They got a pig roasting. I said, I got to bring my son over. I, I got to traumatize my son. You ever see a pig roasting? It's traumatizing. Number one, the fucking thing's tongue was hanging out. You have no idea. The, the, the thing was like this. On the spit. I, I was like, you can't, you guys can't tuck that in. It looks like he died the most horrendous death with his tongue hanging out. And like, I, I don't know how to explain it to you. It was horror on his face. I said, hey, son, look, they got a roasting pig. So whoever, whoever the moron was that put this pig on the spit, like knows nothing about, uh, I don't know, n never balanced the tire in his life. The pig is going like this. I'm like, how is this, this contraption not gonna tip over and like dump hot coals all over the place? It was so unbalanced. And then, so it cooks, it cooks really, a, a lot on this side, and then it's raw with uh, trichinosis on that side. Basically, I'm like, Who? anyhow. So the thing is cut up. The it's cut down the middle. It's splayed open like this. Its little pig feet hooves are like this. <laughs> they got the spit coming right out of the asshole. My son's looking at this thing like, ah, uh, but, ah, uh, but, uh, he doesn't know what to think. And then as it rotates, like, it would rotate and then, like, all the uh, juices would run down the back. This is, like, something out of a horror movie. I got news for you right now. And uh, I said, Tani, you want to have some of that? And he's like, ah, ah. <laughs> Anyway, that's Oktoberfest. What are you going to do? Then I go home. I'm fucking hammered. And I, I lay down on the couch. And I pretend like I'm going to stay awake and watch a movie. And just and just pass out. So that that's about all. Speaking of passing out. I want to talk about this right here. I got a bag the other day. And it's from Paul... Total wine. I'm like, what the hell is this? This is how it came in the mail. It had tape across the top. So I did open it up. So my wife's like, what is that? You ordered wine? I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So I open it up here. We got to save this part for last. Hold on. And there's a note. And it says, to Jesse from Sebastian. And me and Sebastian, I know Sebastian, we talk uh, on Patreon. And he wrote me a really, really nice note about, like, you know, how much he loves the show. And he's over in Spain. If I'm ever in Spain, I'm like, oh, my God, if I was ever in Spain. I said, Sebastian, if I was, if I was a single man and I went to Spain with somebody that knows Spain, we would turn the fucking place upside down. I'm, I'm here to tell you. I'm here to... I, t I love it. Like, listen, I see these young guys, young guys at work and whatnot, and they chase, they chase girls, young guys at work. You understand? I know the whole game. You know, I'm almost glad I'm not in the game anymore. And they tell me about all their girls and whatnot, and they all go out together and whatnot. And I said, listen, guys, I, I got to tell you right now, and I'm not the bragging type because I don't need that in my life. I don't need the ego boost. I said, but if I was single and I went out with you guys, we tear the fucking, we burn the house down. You understand? We burn the fucking town down. If I got, if I went out single now, like God forbid, you know, I don't know, if my wife drove off a cliff or something like that, God forbid, God forbid. Uh, you have, I would go on a tear, I don't know. It would be like uh, Ulysses, Ulysses S. Grant, right? Didn't he go down and fuck up all the, all the, uh, the railroad tracks down south. I'd be ripping railroad tracks out of the ground. 
Huh? What are we talking about? Yeah, if I went to Spain, come on, come on. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu, you ladies of Spain. For we received orders to the back to Boston. And so never more will we see you again. Clint. Can we have a can we have a sip of coffee for 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 Quint? Did I say Clint? <laughs> sip of coffee for Quint, will ya? Quint in the house! That's right. Saddest part of Jaws is when Hooper looks at the uh, chief. And he goes, and Chief goes, Quint. And Hooper's like, no, no. Any other best line in Jaws? Well, there's a ton of best lines in Jaws, but I just love, I can do anything I want. I'm the chief of police. <laughs> That's going to be our new line. I'm the chief of police. What do you got? Hey, listen. Hi, hi, Jesse. Hope you enjoy this. Brandy is a cognac made in Spain. One or two inch on a whiskey glass after dinner will give you the relaxed dream you need. Drink this medicine every night. What a wonderful concept. What a wonderful philosophy. Can you imagine? People in Spain, you know how to live. I got no see right now. Don't they have siesta out there? You don't understand. I love it. We live in we live in such a moron country. It, we, we work like animals. Guys, it's not uncommon for Americans to work 60, 70, 80 hours a week. This is not uncommon. This is the norm. Over there in Spain, they're like, I'm going to kick their shoes off at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, siesta time, sleep till 5, then get back up and go to work. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, fuck the fuck yeah. I want siesta around here. Anyhow, guys, look at this. In, in all things amazing. Oh, shit. The box opened. The box opened. Hold on, I gotta make a recovery here. Oh, shit. Okay, here we go. A beautiful bottle of brandy here. All right. Here we go. This is uh, Cardinal Mendoza. Uh, you know, this is this is great stuff. Brandy. Look at that. Is this a product of Spain? Pr pr product of Spain. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. I did, can't read the rest of the box. There you go. You, you got your little brandy glass there. Listen, this is how you know you've matured as a man. You understand? The alcoholism goes to a whole new level. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Brandy. Brandy. So I'm going to follow his instructions. As a matter of fact, I was going to do it last night, but I got involved in, in a project. So... Yes, we we will do we will do that, Sebastian. We will do this. So look at this. You want to know how classy? It also came with this. Can you imagine? I got news. I guess maybe you, you're allowed to do picnics in Spain. If you brought this out in New York, you'd be in handcuffs in like t minus eight seconds. Look at this. You got you you got to put your precious. This is a real. You got to put your precious bottle in here, right? Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. And then you put the thing around here like that, so it doesn't fall out, of course. And you close that up, and you show the world that alcohol is so important to you that you have to put it in a leather case with a velvet interior. That's right. And you walk around like this. This is, this is how I go to work in the morning. You didn't know? You have to have do. I'm ready to start work. I have my lunch and everything. Come on. Come the fuck on. This is living. This is how they live in Spain. Do you see this? That's right. It's my brandy. I got to bring it everywhere I go. You didn't know? 
to the doctor's office. Come on, the waiting room's a bitch. Hey, two hours in the in the waiting room? Fuck it. I'll do two hours in the waiting room like that. Jesus Christ. Sebastian, I really wanted to thank you for that, buddy. You know, it that just this came off so sincere. You know? Thank you, Sebastian. From Spain. Sip of coffee to you. My mouth is so dry right now. <clears throat> sip of coffee to Sebastian. Okay, well, how, how far are we in over here? Oh my God, it's almost an hour. It's almost an hour. But guys, what I wanted to do today is have a little fun. Can I have a little fun once in a while? Is that, you know, is that allowed? Let's just do some random gaming. Because every time we turn on this machine, there's a new exciting thing I'd love to see. So let's just, let's just hang a left turn. Can we? Picture, picture time! Get our controller. Tap into the Edison line. Pipe through the Sansui 1010. Charging atomic batteries. Kill the lights of attrition. And move you into prime time position. Hold on, let me get my my flaring tool out of the way. That's right, I'm working on brakes on the Mercury. Oh boy, here we go. It's all about me station. It's the all about me station. Here we go, guys. Let's have some fun. Because we can do anything we want. You know why? Because I'm the chief of police. <laughs> Hold on, let me move this fucking thing out of the way. Here we go. Look at this loading system configuration. This is this this is a very braggadocious uh, emulation system. Look, it's bragging right now. Look at look at all the systems I'm loading. Look at me. I have to tell everybody I'm narcissist machine. <sighs> how can we have some fun here? I tell you how. Oh god, 3DO. I mean, we could do that. Amstrad, Arcade, Atari. Uh, I mean, pick your pleasure. Pick your goddamn... Oh, Jaguar. Oh my god. Lynx. Oh my god. Astrocade. What? <laughs> Astrocade with pedophile grandpa. <laughs> All right. Uh, Amiga. What? Let's... Amiga. Let's do a random game. Can we do that? I'm just gonna, we're just gonna go here. We've got a lot of games here. Three, two, one, stop! Battletoads, come on! No, we don't wanna see Battletoads. Hey, hey! Oh wait, Dangerous Streets? Oh my God. Look at the thong. We're in. Uh, this we do a little Amiga, like what? Like at, at at all at a whim. This is alien technology. It's Area Fifty One. I mean, it, listen, if the, if we had this box back in back in the fifties, well, I guess you wouldn't be able to hook up the uh, HDMI now, would you? Okay, what happened? Catastrophic failure. All right. This is God telling us to run away from this game. There she goes. Look at that. Oh, Ric Flair programmed this. All right, I'm in. There we go. Oh. Guy, what what year? Come on. Whoa, look at this. Is this what you guys were getting on the Amiga? 
You know how happy I would have been about that as a kid? Christ's sake. This is a uh, trip in the bone valve. Press, I'll listen to this. <laughs> play versus play, play versus CPU. Oh my God! Look at these! Look at these guys! This this guy looks like a real cretin. <laughs> he's born in Germany. <laughs> of course, he's got to look like Nosferatu. Occupation custodian in an old castle. <laughs> Can you imagine that job? Who is she? Born in France. Occupation. Teacher in a gymnasium. Yeah, okay. Born in England. Occupation. Top model. Who's this guy? with the? He's got the... What is this? Born in Pennsylvania. Occupation. Expert palmist? What the hell's a palmist? Who's this guy? Born in North America. Spiritual boss of Suez. All right, you're out of here. This guy looks like Elvis. Born in Italy, but lives in America. Occupation Playboy. Yeah, it sounds about right. Was, where's this guy born? Let me guess. Switzerland? What? He's a lorry driver. And how about how about this one? I know, this is boring. Let's go. Born in Italy. Uh, worn, work in a disco club. All right. Let's go to our German friend here. In the spirit of Oktoberfest. Hey, Okay. <laughs> this might be the greatest game of all time we're about to play. Um. Well, I'm glad they uh, they were able to preserve the loading time on this emulation station. Very grateful for that. Um. um oh, Jesus. This is the guy that works in the disco? Look at this! I don't know what I'm doing. Horrendous play control. This game is a mess. What a shame. Look at that! It's got... If I could move, I'm on springs, no wonder. I'm trying everything, guys. I don't know what to tell you. All right, punching out. <sighs> it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. All right, you know what? Let's go back. We'll try, and we can try anything. Daphne? What is this? Oh, laser disc emulation. Wow. The dragon. 8-bit computer. 33 games available. Dragon 326. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, boy. Brain Ache. Canyon. Capture the Flag. They don't even have things for this. Look at this. Let's play a little Canyon Climber. Guys, to me, this is where the rubber hits the road. This is like unbelievable. Who ever heard of the dragon? We're all playing the dragon right now. Oish. Oh boy. Okay, how do we start? Oh, he's on analog. Oh boy. Oh Jesus. Okay, uh, Dragon was great. Uh, um, I can't get out. Game over. Okay. How do I, how do I leave this, this hell on earth? I can't get out. I can't get out. I'm in a panic. Oh, there we go. All right. Oh boy, so much for the dra channel F. Oh my god. The Vectrex. Oh guys, you wanna play a little Vectrex? 
Armor Attack, Bedlam. Cosmic Chasm. Let's do this. Oh, we'll play a little Hyper Chase. Mm. Nobody in the history of YouTube has ever gone from the Dragon to the Vetrex. In Team Midas, uh, uh, we're doing it real time. We're doing it live! Music in 1982. How about that? Oh, no, player one. One game, yes. Start. No? One game, start. Oh. Oh, Jesus! Whoa, that is some handling right there. Whoa! Okay. How do we go? All right, maybe the, uh... Oh. All right, carefully now. Is there a gear or something? There's got to be another gear. Oh, there's the gears, baby! Shit! Alright, here we go. Ready? Oh, it's got a rev limiter! Oh my Christ, it's... Listen to that engine. Here we go, ready? Oh yeah, second gear, baby. High gear, right? Feels fast. Oh. What would I hit? The line in the road? Oh God, we're out of here. We are out of here. Oh boy. All right, we got time for one more. MS DOS, MSX. We need something high end. Oh baby. Let's do a PC Engine game. Random. Random game coming at you. Random game, random game, random game, random game, random game, random game, and. Oh, we went to the bottom. Oh boy. And stop. Strip fighter. Ah, I guess we're gonna have to do it. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. So these are all strippers, huh? Bella, Martha, Medusa, Nina, Yuki, Amanda. I like Nina. Oh God, it sounds like my wife. Oh yeah. Oh, a tits came out. Oh, take that one. Oh, Nina's hot. Oh, oh, Jesus, Crimela. Where's your super move, baby? Where's your super move? Oh, I can see the the pancakes she had for breakfast. Holy mackerel. All right, I think we have time for one more round. What music, huh? Oh my god, I'm getting double deed over here. Oh, Jesus! Oh, that's the trick. 
Oh yeah. I broke the game. I broke the game. That's right. Half high splits all day. All right, guys, guys. I have a tremendous. Okay, okay, we know, we know, you're still here. I have a tremendous headache now. Do you realize you just tuned in to the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization? And you better believe that. With the 4K face! We'll see you next time. If you don't know about the Patreon channel by now, you're a moron. That's right. This is, it's epic content. It's damn near experimental as, as far as I'm concerned. When I go on the Patreon uh, show to do, to do the Advices channel, and I'll trip on my own words, it sets me free like a bird. I feel like, I feel like we can go a thousand miles an hour. Do you understand? Because people... A lot of people aren't watching that, so it's great. What am I saying? Guys, we have 30 episodes. I think the last episode we did was a knockout out of the park, in my personal opinion. My personal opinion. And it's fantastic. And guys, we appreciate the Patreons now, of course, you know, more than ever, because our videos are, are slowly getting stripped and demonetized because of bad language. Yes, bad language, censorship, freedom of speech, gone. That's right. And you know, it's not even it's not even like, like the government is coming after us. It's it's corporations, guys. That's right. So we we're, we're not ad friendly around here. And to, to, I wear that like a badge of honor. So fuck Home Depot, fuck Lowe's, fuck Coca-Cola, fuck McDonald's, fuck everybody. That's right. We're not ad friendly around here. So we do an advices program on Patreon. Here's the email down below. Put advices in the header. Very important. You have to put advices in the header. Or I don't see it. Because if I go to regular emails, I see so many people asking advices, but they didn't put advices in the header. So I I have to check advices when I get on, when I get on my email. And then all the advices things come up. But if you're putting in a regular email, I'm not going to get it. So resend it with advices. Okay? Just so you know. And we give you wonderful advices, just like this. This is the real truth, by the way. Don't listen to these asshole women on YouTube. What turns a woman on? She's like, well, we need foreplay. You gotta give us a massage first. Ha! And then you can't just stick it in. Ha! Your mama wears fake eyelashes. Ooh. Stop making excuses, all right, pal? Stop it. She was a real slob, too. Oh, the best. I know. I, I feel the tumor behind my eye growing, too. All right, guys. Listen. Write in and send your advices. And we need, we need advices, so you might want to write the fuck in. So we can continue the advices program. And what we do is we solve all your problems. You have problems. Everybody does. But you talk to me. And I sincerely try to get to the bottom of them. And usually do. And all your problems go away. Just like that. That's right. Patreons, I want to tell you how truly grateful I am for each and every one of you. I really am. We'll see you next time. <laughs>